to Waitman's podcast concerning the fundamentals of event cancellation insurance presented by me, James Dennison, and my colleague, Mark Fitzgerald. Both of us are insurance lawyers in Waitman's litigation team and subject to the coronavirus lockdown, we both work out of the firm's London office. Our contact details are supplied along with the link to this content. This podcast is one of a series addressing the big five types of insurance cover, which subject to exclusions are intended to cover perils that will arise from outbreaks of disease, as opposed to types of insurance that might end up indemnifying against losses arising from coronavirus, despite not being specifically designed to cover perils arising from outbreaks of disease. So in addition to event cancellation insurance, this series covers business interruption, denial of access, loss of attraction and infectious disease. All of the podcasts will address the scope of cover, policy triggers, and potential difficulties of interpretation. So Mark is going to kick off in relation to the scope of cover. Thanks, James. Event cancellation insurance is a type of contingency insurance. In the run-up to an event, significant costs will be incurred, and organisers will have contractual commitments to suppliers, artists, and perhaps sponsors as well. It can be included as part of a wider insurance policy or as a standalone policy with specific circumstances being taken into account. For example, a specific one-off event. Broadly speaking, and subject to various exclusions and limitations I'll discuss later, an event cancellation policy is designed to cover the cancellation, postponement or curtailment of the event because of circumstances that are unavoidable and due to reasons beyond the insured's control. While all policy wordings are different, Event cancellation insurance typically covers the following types of loss. Irrecoverable costs and expenses. For example, a venue being inaccessible due to safety concerns or a performer or guest speaker cancelling due to illness. This will tend to give rise to complex issues of quantification, not least given the likely network of contracts with suppliers and customers affected. Loss of revenue or profit. In other words, net profit that would have been earned had the event taken place. And finally, additional costs. In certain policies, there is also an additional costs clause to reduce a loss if cancellation is threatened or the event needs to be rearranged. This is specifically designed to mitigate the risk of cancellation and thus the risk of additional losses for the insurer. This may include, subject to the policy wording, reimbursement of fees or charges which an insured is under a legal obligation to return. Some policies also include an extension for the payment of refunds where there is no contractual obligation to do so. If it can be proved to the insurer's reasonable satisfaction to be commercially essential. However, unless some extension is present, it has to be assumed that the insured will not be covered. Thanks, Mark. Um, as for the uh, triggers for cover, event cancellation insurance is different from many other forms of insurance in that it's not a prerequisite for cover that the losses suffered are consequent on some form of physical damage. In order to trigger an event cancellation policy, such postponement or cancellation must usually be beyond the insured's control. Uh, the wording may refer to the cancellation being as a sole and direct result of a cause entirely beyond your control. So uh, insurers will expect event organizers to explain precisely why an event is being postponed or canceled. Clearly, it will be easier to show that a decision was beyond the insured's control where a government or other relevant authority ordered the cancellation or postponement of an event, regardless of the insured's perspective. On the other hand, a policy is unlikely to respond if an event is preemptively cancelled due to fear of the pandemic spread. Policy wordings may also require the insured to make an effort in good faith to reschedule an event before cancelling it. Early dialogue between policyholders and insurers is to be encouraged. Uh, in the context of the coronavirus outbreak, policyholders and insurers will need to consider the timing of the cancellation or postponement relative to dates when, for example, COVID-19 became notifiable in law on the 5th of March 2020 and or the government's announcement on the 16th of March 2020 that every, everyone should avoid gatherings and crowded places. And the cause of the cancellation or postponement, for example, was the cancellation or postponement unavoidable because of the restrictive measures put in place. So that's it for the uh, triggers and back to Mark to deal with the potential difficulties of interpretation of these policies. Thanks, James. I'm going to cover the following four topics. Exclusions, communicable disease extensions, quantification of loss and general conditions. 
Dealing first with exclusions. Many policies will expressly exclude any losses arising out of or resulting from certain communicable diseases. Communicable disease, like COVID-19, is an illness caused by viruses or bacteria that is spread from one person to another through contact with contaminated surfaces, bodily fluids, blood products, insect bites, or through the air. These exclusions often expressly refer to certain previous global disease events, for example, SARS or avian flu. However, in addition to excluding cover for explicitly named communicable diseases, such exclusion clauses may also contain a catch-all provision relating to any other flu variant or communicable disease, leading to some sort of restriction on movement of people and goods. In some cases, the wording is directly linked to official classifications of the relevant disease, for example, by the World Health Organization. Some policies also exclude any loss suffered as a consequence of actions taken in controlling, preventing, or suppressing the communicable disease. Cover under any such exclusion can be written back in if the insured has purchased a specific communicable disease extension. Such extensions are often limited or qualified in the following ways. Excluding any loss arising directly or indirectly from threat or fear of the disease. Requiring an order of the government or a civil, public, or local authority to cancel the event or production. In other words, by forbidding gatherings over a certain number of people or to close down the venue in question for cover to be triggered. Restricting the coverage only to outbreaks of disease which originate and or manifest within the confines of the venue, directly leading to closure of that venue. For example, Legionnaire's disease, which is different to something like COVID-19. Policyholders should ensure that any potential loss has been accurately calculated, since claims for irrecoverable costs and expenses incurred and lost profits will give rise to complex issues of quantification. With regard to quantification, communicable disease extensions can have a lower sublimit than the policy limit for cancellation cover. Any sublimit is commonly described as any one occurrence and in the aggregate, meaning that a limit of, for example, £500,000 could apply in respect of any and all cancellations linked to the outbreak of COVID-19. Furthermore, the burden of proving and quantifying that loss will be on the policyholder, and therefore records of all costs incurred and estimated profits, or historical profits from previous events if applicable, should be kept to ensure that losses can be readily evidenced. Finally, general conditions. The general conditions section of the policy wording will contain the obligations to which the, the insured must comply with in respect of notifying any circumstances or incidents that could give rise to a claim. It is likely to be a condition of the policy that any liability provided by insurers is subject to immediate notification by the policyholder of any incident which could or is likely to result in a claim under the policy. Of course, the precise wording will differ depending upon the particular policy. And that notification of any claim must be given within usually a short time scale. Indeed, and it's uh, probably also worth mentioning that the remedies for any breaches of the policy terms will be determined with reference to the Insurance Act 2015. So to conclude, uh, the coronavirus outbreak and subsequent lockdown will inevitably result in a large number of claims under event cancellation policies. Um, while the principles we've discussed are of general application, the availability of cover in each instance will uh, be dependent on the expressed terms of each policy and the uh, precise factual background. Going forward, we expect that insurers will expressly exclude cover for occurrences arising out of COVID-19, with uh, some insurers having already begun adding endorsements to policies to exclude coronavirus. Um, however, policies written before the end of 2019 are unlikely to contain such exclusions. Uh, we hope you found this podcast useful. If you have any questions or comments in relation to the issues that Mark and I have covered, please don't hesitate to write a comment on the social media or contact us directly by telephone or email. We also hope that you'll be able to catch other podcasts from Waitman's in this series and beyond. Meanwhile, please take care of yourselves and stay safe.